Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Good to see our wonderful faces in the sanctuary. Yes. Hey, you know what? It's all right to enjoy yourself in the yes. Lord. Yes, yes, See, this is where people yes. miss it because they don't want to enjoy themselves in the Lord because religion has taught them that they can't enjoy themselves. You should be enjoying yourself in the Amen. Lord. Why? Because Amen. Jesus enjoyed himself. He didn't care what other people think. That's why Amen. they called him wine bibber and they say he was a friend of sinners. But you know what? Those are people who we're supposed to be going out to get and bring Amen. in. Amen. 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 If you can't go out there and you can't dance, you probably ain't bringing in nobody. <laughs> so, it's good to know how to dance. Yeah. Amen. 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 If you can't pick it up from anybody else, pick it up from them. If you got grandchildren, pick it up from your grands. Because them kids know how to do it. Say it. I don't know how, but they do it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Oh my goodness, let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. we thank you, Lord, Glory. for this opportunity to be in your presence once again, Father. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord, for pouring out your spirit, Father God, into each and every one of us. We thank you, Lord, that your word will go forth and not return void, that will accomplish everything that you have called it. Thank you that your word shall flow from my belly like rivers of living water, and your people should be as the trees planted by the rivers bearing fruit in their season. Their season is now. Thank you, Lord. That we all should get understanding of your word from the youngest in spirit to the oldest. As your word tells us, and all of our getting to get and understand me. Right now, Father God, what I know, Father God, I dismiss. Father God, I lose my mind right now so I gain the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. 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 My thoughts are no longer my thoughts, but it is now. Your thoughts that are now my thoughts. Lord. I am an ambassador. Hallelujah. I surrender all to you. Use me as you please. Thank you, Thank you Father, that everybody will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the end of the day. I decrease as you increase. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. You may be seated. So we talked about what last week finished. We're on the second part of the series titled Finished. Yeah. All right, Finished. Because when Jesus was on that cross, if you weren't here last week, we showed two videos, right? And one of the videos helped you understand back in the Old Testament how you used to do a, a ceremonial thing where they go in and see the priests and everything, and they had to bring a lamb without spot and wrinkle, right? And when they brought the lamb without spot and wrinkle, the priest laid his head, the priest had the guy lay his hands on the actual sacrifice. And what would happen is what? The sin would go from him, ceremonially, into the sacrifice, right? And then when it went into the sacrifice, it was your sin being put into the lamb, and the lamb's righteousness being put into you, because he was a lamb without, he was a lamb without spot or wrinkle. All right, he was perfect, right? Amen. And so, that had to keep happening. And God didn't want that. Because we, you know, think about it. If we kept doing that, people today, you'd be killing Fido and Mickey Mouse, and you'd be making all kinds of sacrifices with your neighbor's animals and everything else. So we couldn't do that. <laughs> Nevertheless, God gave us a sacrifice, a lamb of God. Amen? Amen. And so Jesus became that lamb for us. And what he did was all that sin, in short, we showed it in the video, all that sin came and, and it went into who? Jesus, when he was on the cross, right? Uh -huh. He took on our sin, and when he took on our sin, it was a trade, right? And what, what did he trade with us? We took on his, we took, he took on our sin, and he gave us his righteousness. Amen? Amen? Amen. He gave us his righteousness which made us righteous, justified, and holy. Amen? Amen? So how do you become more righteous than what Jesus has made you? You cannot. It doesn't matter how you live your life, how you made some mistakes, how you fell, tripped, got back up. It don't matter if you pastor, prophet, apostle. It does not matter. You can't be any more righteous than what Jesus made you. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is why, even though we're righteous, we still have to renew our mind according to the scriptures. The scripture tells us to be transformed through what? Yeah. 
The renewing of our mind. Now, renewing ing, that's something that's continual. Something that's continual. You can't renew your mind one day and think you're going to know who Jesus is. Amen? Amen. You can't fill your tank up today and think it's going to be filled up next week if you're driving it all week. That's right. Amen. 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 So you have to keep being in the place where you're being washed by the water of the word according to Ephesians 5 and 26, where you're being washed by the water of the word so that you can become that vessel that God can use for his purpose. Amen? Amen. Amen. Finish with it. Jesus finished. Jesus finished a lot for us. Amen? Amen. And we talked about um, how he took on our sin and everything I was just talking about was pretty much Romans 23, the first part. Amen? Amen. And then, let's talk about this part. The second part, Romans 6, 23, it says this. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Right? Amen. So the gift of God is eternal life. Now, before that, people were following the law, but the letter of the law brought what? Sin. Death. death. Amen. Sin too. Sin the Bible says, sin was, I mean, the Bible says, the Bible never said, all right, that the law was here to make us righteous. No. The Bible never said that anybody can get saved by the law. No. That's right. The scripture clearly shows us that the only way that we can be saved is through Christ. Amen. 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 Only way we can be saved is through Christ. That's why God said he didn't want no more goats. Like, he didn't want that type of sacrifice anymore. We needed to have a final sacrifice. Why? Because Jesus, he, when he came, what he did was he died once, what? For wow. all. Uh -huh. For the pastor. Nope. No. For the bishop. Nope. For the deacon. For the usher. For everybody. Including crackheads. Pills. Prostitutes. Drunks. All. All. No matter what's going on in your life, Jesus came to give you his righteousness. And if you take on his righteousness, then what's going to happen is you are going to now renew your mind. As you get into a place, you're going to renew your mind. And see, as you take on that righteousness, now you can see yourself living that way. Amen. 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 People think that it's just an automatic thing. It's not an automatic thing. When you gave your life to Christ, did you give your life to Christ one day and then the next day you were oh, <laughs> floating around, walking on water? Uh, no. When you gave your life to Christ, you were probably... This ain't nothing, y'all. You probably smoking weed, doing something like that, taking some type of uh, methamphetamine or quaaludes or some quaaludes back in the day. Y'all remember yeah, about yeah, that? Yeah. But I kind of dated myself a little bit. <laughs> if you gave your life to Christ and that was going on in your life the day before you gave your life to Christ, when you gave life to Christ, that's still going to go on when you walk out the church. Right. See, religion is played with the, the lives of people so long, made them feel like when they get their life to Christ, everything changes in that moment. It does not. There are a lot of people out there who have fire insurance because they believe in Jesus, but they don't know how to live the abundant life Amen. that Jesus came to give them. Amen. So they're living well beneath their means because they're listening to some type of religion that's telling them that they shouldn't have or they shouldn't do. Religion would tell you, oh, they dancing in that church. Oh, they oh, they shouldn't be doing what that David danced. He danced up out his clothes. I ain't seen nobody here do that. You better not do it. <laughs> Amen. Just keep dancing. Just keep dancing. It's okay. Amen. Amen. See, the thing is, we have to decipher the word of God from religion. Amen. The word of God from church rules and regulations. Amen. Amen. And when we when we finally do that, then we'll be able to live free. Amen. We'll be able to live free, even though we're already free. You know, you can be free and live like you're in bondage. Yeah. Give you the, this uh, <clears throat> a little story about this dog. All right, I can remember taking my son, me and my wife, we took our son to this place uh, in Kempner, and he was going you know, to his friend's party. It was he was he was in junior high. All my boys are grown now, but he was in junior high. Took him to this party, and. People were concerned about this dog that was next door. 
because this dog was always barking at me. They're always, you know, coming at the people. But the thing that would stop this dog was it always had a, a chain and a leash on it that, or a rope on it. So when it went so far, it got yoked and choked, all right? And then it would stay at that one spot, even though the people were close, it couldn't get to the people. And so it would stay at that one spot because of the limitations of the line. Well, one day they forgot to put the line on the dog. And everybody was out there doing what they do, right? And what happened was the dog ran out like he was going after him, and he stopped. Right where the limitation of the leash normally stopped. Even though this dog was free, he didn't know how to live free. Amen. Because he couldn't let go of the limits of the law. Amen. And that's what's happening to a lot of people in church today. They don't know how to let go of the limits of the law. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, it should have never been taught to Christians to live by it. Amen. But it should have been taught to Christians to get an understanding of what was the coming, an understanding of how we are, how we've gotten where we are, how we got our Jesus, how all this came, right? Because back in there, back in the Old Testament, we have to understand something. It was a, it was, it was a, a the law of the prophets was a shadow of what was to come. So who came? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. So Jesus came while we still following shadows. Mm. Moving on. <laughs> Say about that. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So mankind today doesn't have to do any yearly sacrifices. Amen. Why? Because Praise we God. have a high priest and his name Amen. is Jesus. Amen. And he sacrificed Amen. once Amen. and for us all. Amen. Amen. The question is, have you received it? Amen. Because if you haven't received it, that means you're still trying to do things by the shadow. And if you're still trying to do things by the shadow, what you are saying is the blood of Jesus wasn't good enough, so you need to go back and do something else just to make yourself a little more righteous. I got to tweak it just a little bit, you know. Because see, back in the back in the back in the, in the Mosaic Law, they did it like this. Guess what? You weren't given the Mosaic Law. Right. Amen. Amen. You are Christian. Christian, the first time the word Christian is even used in the Bible is in the book of Acts. And the reason being is because you can't be a Christian until after Christ dies and, and resurrects. Amen. 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 And so being a Christian now, you're following who? Christ. Christ. Instead of Moses. You Amen. can't follow them both. It's Amen. time to get off. <laughs> Listen, y'all. We got to get out from under Mount, uh, out from under Moses, mm -hmm. and we need to start following Jesus. But you can't follow them both. Right. Right. You can't follow them both. Old Testament was there for a reason. It was there so that we can learn and see uh, what was to come. Not only that, but it it it, it, it confirmed everything <coughs> that happened in the life of Jesus. He can't. He confirmed everything. Amen? Amen. And another reason we need to know the Old Testament is so that we don't repeat Amen. the mistakes Say that again. of the past. Amen. Amen? Amen? So we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. If we forget about the, the, the past, we will repeat mm -hmm. the mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so this is why the law has to be taught. Amen. 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 So that you can understand that, oh, this is why we needed a Savior. Amen. 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 So remember, you can either follow Moses or you can either follow Jesus, but you can't follow them both. I'll take Jesus for 150. <laughs> I thank you. Amen. 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 Um, I wanna well let me ask you this. The, so <clears throat> did the law come to get rid of sin? No. no. What did the law do? According to scripture, the law increased Amen. sin. Amen. 
And since the law increased sin, mankind basically, you know what? It was no way you was going get, to get to the point of being righteous. Right. There was no way that you was going to get to being saved. Your sins in the Old Testament were atoned, but they were not eradicated. Amen. Not erased. Good word. Good word. Amen. And so now, because of the final, the best, the top notch, you know how you talk about your favorite best steak, the top notch lamb has become our sacrifice. And he did it once. For all. Now the Bible says, Whosoever will believe in him shall have everlasting life. Are you a whosoever will? Yes, I, am. I am a whosoever will. Yes, it doesn't say whosoever will believe in Moses will have no. everlasting life. No. It doesn't say that because even Moses didn't have everlasting life. Everybody <laughs> has to go through Jesus. Amen. Before that, they went to the bosom of Abraham, which was. A, uh, it was a, it was called um, paradise, and people think paradise is a level of heaven, but it's really not. Paradise is a level of hell, and so they had to go there before Jesus. Remember when Jesus died, right? Mm -hmm. And they put him in, in the grave when Jesus rose. What happened to all the people that were dead? They rose. They rose. Now they have an opportunity to believe in Jesus. Amen. 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 Jesus, look, nobody on this earth dies without having an opportunity to believe in Jesus. Amen. The Bible tells us that God is what? He is fair. He's just. That's the word. He's just. That means he doesn't give me more than he gives you. And you know why? Because he is not a respect the person. That's the script. That's what he uses. But let me break that down in English to you. God does not do favoritism. There you go. Amen. Amen. He doesn't do favoritism. Same thing he does for me, he does for everybody. If you simply receive him the same Amen. way I receive him. Amen. 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 Good word. Good word. So Jesus basically when it came to the law, he did what with it? Finished it. Finished it. Where are we, buddy? No, he made it. That's what the scripture says. The scripture says it became obsolete. Amen. So let's go to Hebrews 10, 19. I'm going to read the message version. Is that okay? Amen. And I'm going to give a little, you know, Pastor Jackson commentary in the middle. Of it. All right? Amen. When you get there, hold up. You're not there yet. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, Hebrews 10 and 19. I'm, I'm a, and I'm reading, I believe, through 25. And it is the uh, message. Are you there? Amen. And it says this. So, friends, we can now, without hesitation, walk right up to God into the holy place. Remember, we couldn't walk up to God before because we were considered to be unrighteous. Mm -hmm. Remember what we talked about last week? If the if the high priest went in the place of holy of holies, the back the back room with the Ark of the Covenant, mm -hmm. if he wasn't right, what would happen to him? Right. He'd drop dead. They'd hear the bells because he had bells around him. He'd hear the bells in the ground and they had a rope wrapped around him and they're just pulling on out. <laughs> yeah. So that holy place, something changed when Jesus died. Remember the curtain? Yep. The curtain was ripped from where? The curtain of the uh, tabernacle. From the top to the bottom. That means God ripped it. God got rid of this thing. It wasn't mankind that got rid of it. Amen? Amen. You couldn't rip this curtain anyway. It was six inches thick. Now who can rip that type of a curtain? All right. <clears throat> Jesus has cleared the way by the blood of his sacrifice. Are y'all still with me? Yes, Acting as our priest before God. The curtain, I just talked about that, right? Mm -hmm. The curtain into God's presence is his 
body. So what this is saying now is that that curtain is done. The 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 way to get to the uh, to get to God. Remember, they had to go through the curtain and be in the place uh, where the um, Ark of the Covenant was, the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. They had to do that no more. Now you know who they go through. Jesus, right? Amen. And I got news for you. So if they go through Jesus, right? Because understand this. It just said that the, the, the curtain. Mm -hmm. huh? It says he became the curtain. He, right? He became the curtain. He has a bride. And the bride's name, the church. Amen. It's me. Amen. 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 And so the bride is a part of whose body? Aren't we a part of the body of Christ? Amen. So what the scripture is saying is what is coming down is now to get to the Father, you've got to go through the Son. And the only way they're going to go through the Son is by the body. Amen. The body. This is why you can't be telling people they're going to hell for this and going to hell for that. This is why you can't be condemning people and telling them that they're doing this wrong or they're doing that wrong. That is not your point. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, in school, you know, your kids are making, you know, two plus two will never be three. All right? No, I'm not talking about that. All right? I'm talking about the, talking about the scriptures. Listen, we were not put here to judge people. We were not put here to condemn people. We were put here to love people. Amen. We were put here to bring people back to the Father. Amen. Now, if we're going to bring people back to the Father, that means that he is still using his body. Amen? Where's the Holy Spirit at? In us. Amen. That's what makes Amen. us the body. That's what makes right. us the church, right? right? So in order to get to the Father, that means somebody needs to open the door. Christians. Come on now. Come on now. Amen. That's why Jesus got so mad at the Pharisees. So, them, you know what? You guys... Close the door up to everybody else and you yourselves aren't going. Mm -hmm. You close the way to heaven to everybody else but you yourselves aren't going. That's what he told the Pharisees, the religious leaders. Jesus, he always dealt with those religious leaders. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the people. It wasn't the people in the streets. No. They never gave him any problems. It was always those religious leaders. Those who thought they had a little something and didn't know nothing. Mm -hmm. Jesus is our way. He is the way to the Father. Amen. That means that you all are part of the new curtain. Amen. You understand? Yeah. Amen. So in order for somebody to get to the place, the Holy of Holies, guess who they go through? The body. How is they going to learn about Jesus? Amen. Amen. Aren't you a part of the body of Christ? Yeah. Don't be afraid to say it. It's yeah. all right. You are a part of the body of Christ. Yes, you are. You are his arms. We said it again. I'll say it, I'll say it again. God the Father is the head. Jesus is the face. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. All that, right? The breath of God. And who is his body? We are. We are his arms. We are his legs. We are his feet. We are his hands. We are his elbows. We are, we are the body of Christ. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is working through us, the new curtain, amen, amen. to bring people closer to the Father. Amen. That is our job, amen? Amen. 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 Verse 20, or verse 22, it says, are you ready? Yes, sir. It says, so, so let's do it. Full of belief, confident, that we're presentable inside and out. Mm. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He always keeps his word. He always keeps his word. Do I hear that? Yeah. Amen. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out. Not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on. Especially as we see the big day approaching. Amen. 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 So let's go back up to 22. We'll go back up there again, okay? So let's do it full of belief, confident that we're presentable inside and out. Now, in order to be presentable to God the Father, you have to be what? Righteous. 
You have to be like that lamb that was clean, right? Without spot or wrinkle. All right, so when Jesus made that sacrifice for you, what happened? Again, you gave him your unrighteousness and he took, no, you, yeah, you gave him his, uh, your unrighteousness and he gave you his righteousness. Right. Right. Okay? <clears throat> so now we don't have to be, we don't, look, no matter what you do, if you took on Jesus' righteousness, right? You don't have to feel guilty anymore. Amen. You don't have to feel ashamed anymore. You don't have to feel unworthy anymore. Amen. You don't have to do that anymore. Why? Because Jesus died for you. If, if God gave his one and only begotten son just for you, what make you think that you are not worthy? What make you think that God is not thinking about you? You know, the scripture says that the angels are saying, what is man that God is so mindful of him? Mm. I'm going to tell you what man is. Man is second in charge. The Bible says there's going to be a time when even we judge angels. Woo. Let's, let's work on this part first, though. All right, let's work on this part first. So in the body of Christ, what is our mission? What is our purpose? Huh? Oh, somebody just said it. 2 Corinthians 5 and 18. I heard you. <laughs> NIV, 2 Corinthians 5.18, NIV. I heard you. Somebody out there. Amen. Amen. When you get there, hold up. You're not there yet. Amen. Amen. NIV. Now, you know, I always read scripture to y'all. You know why I read scripture to you all? Because... I shouldn't be giving you my opinions. I don't have an opinion. Why? Because I was bought with a price. What is that price? Blood of, Blood of Jesus. So I don't have an opinion. I walk by faith and live by truth. Truth is his word. Truth is him. Amen? So I'm not giving you my opinions. This is why I always have you go to the word. Because I want you to see it for yourself. Amen? Amen. Are you there? Yes, ma'am. All right, all right. 2 Corinthians 5 and 18 uh, in IV. It says, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. Who did he reconcile to himself? Us. us. Through who? Christ. Through Christ. And gave us, somebody say us, us, us the ministry of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. Hold on, before we do that, I'm going back to 19. I'm going back to 18. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to 18. I have a question for you. What is reconciliation? Hmm? To be reconnected, redeemed, huh? Back to you know Adam and Eve before they ate the fruit. They were all one man. They were all walking in the garden with God. I mean, they were together. They were cool. But something changed as soon as they took the fruit, right? And so now God is trying to get us back to that position where we are walking with Him. Amen? Amen. And so then right now the closest thing, unless we are dead and already in heaven, the closest thing is by making us a part of the body of Christ. Amen. 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 So reconciliation is the process of ransoming man from his state of sin and spiritual darkness. In order to restore him, restore who? Mankind Amen. to a state of harmony and unity with God. Amen. Harmony and unity with God. Could you put that slide up, please? Could you get the slide, the, the thing, and point it to this one? That one had a glare out of this world last week. <laughs> All right, y'all see this? So mankind is here to the left. Father God is there to the right. And we got uh, death and hell 
below. Y'all see that? All right. So what had to happen in order, see, when, when, when Adam sinned, this gate opened up, this, this bridge opened up. And so we were now no longer connected to God. So we were trying to do things on our own. And every time we tried to do things on our own, we would fall into this little lake. Right? Why? Because the, the scripture says the uh, um, wages of sin is death. death. So we kept falling short. Kept falling short. Kept falling short. If you don't believe in Jesus, you're still falling short. <laughs> you're still falling short. But what I love about Jesus is he ain't going to make you Amen. love him. He's not going to make you accept him. God is not like that. He loves everybody, whether you are a Christian, Buddhist, it don't make a difference. Whatever you are, he still loves you. But you got to understand something. There's only one way to get to the Father, and that's through the Son. You see that bridge? It says Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. So <clears throat> with Jesus, when he did what he did on the cross, he became the bridge. Now the bridge, once he became the bridge, he reconciled mankind to the left, Back to the Father that's on the right. So the bridge came down. So Jesus became our bridge. Amen. 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 And now that we have that bridge, we can go boldly to the throne of grace and we can talk to God just for ourselves. Amen. 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 Back then they needed to go to a priest. I still got people coming up to me, believe it or not, want to confess things to me. I'm like, stop. I don't want to hear it. And we had a guy that was here for a short while. He wanted to come and confess, confess all his sins. But why? Cast your cares on Jesus. Because Jesus cares for you. Don't cast your cares on the pastor. He has his own mess. <laughs> That's his own mess. I'll pray with you. I'll agree with you. But I don't want to hear about it. Keep that to yourself. TMI, baby. Too much information. So the practical answer here is... Christ became the bridge between mankind and God. Amen? Amen. That's why the angel said in Luke 2.14, remember when uh, Jesus was born and you know he was there in the manger? So the angel said, uh, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Now when it was saying peace, goodwill, this, this is Luke King James Version. When it was saying peace, Towards, it said peace, goodwill towards men. When it was saying peace and goodwill towards men, it wasn't talking about men being peaceful with men. We ain't got, you see all the stuff that's going on, all these wars and rumors of wars and all the stuff that's happening right now. Men ain't gonna never have peace with men. However, it was talking about peace between God and man. Why? Amen. Because again, Jesus became the bridge. Amen. 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 And so now, we don't have to go through all that crazy stuff that they were going through in the Old Testament, bringing up their sins every year so that they can sacrifice, all right, make the sacrifice, killing off their lamb. And, and the thing about it is God don't want you like them. Every year they have to remember their sin. That means they never had a free conscience. They had sin all the time. If you wake up in the morning time, you say, Lord, forgive me for the sin I haven't even done yet. You have a conscience of sin. And God don't want you having that. Amen. 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 If you did something, and we all have, if you did something, we're not always proud of things we've done, right? And you felt shame about it, you don't have to feel shame no more. You don't have to feel shame no more. Hey, everybody from the pulpit to the parking lot has made a mistake. Amen. Right. Amen? Amen. And we ain't got to be ashamed of it no more. Why? Because Jesus is our bridge. Amen. That's what he did. He finished that construction. Amen? Amen. 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 It's finished. Amen? Amen. Can we go to Colossians 2 and 13? I'm going to read through 14. NLT, I apologize. Deep, I'm out of water, man. I need some help. I'm parched. Colossians 2, 13. Colossians 2 and 13. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. When you get there, hold up to not there yet. Amen. Keep that slide up. I want people to be reminded that Jesus is the bridge. Amen. Amen. Part of people who say, oh, well, you can get to God. You know, God is just this thing that's up in the sky. And I know there's a greater power. Let me tell you something. <laughs> God is the only power. That Amen. Amen. You gotta understand something. Hey, all these people, they're like Confucius and Muhammad and you know Buddha. All these people have graves. But Jesus don't have a grave. Why? Because he is the only one who is not dead. Amen. 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 Haley Celeste, for those who were part of uh, uh what is that? Rastafari. Rastafari. Celeste Haley, he died in 72. You know that picture you always see on when people have this, they call it black Jesus, and they put it on the picture and they got to hang it up in their house. There ain't no black Jesus. That is Haley Celeste. Get him off your wall now. Jesus ain't got no dreads, man. See, but that's the problem because we don't be in, we don't get into a place where we can receive the teaching to understand that Jesus was Jewish. He was Hebrew. He was Israelite. Amen. 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 And so when we're not in a place where we can get teaching, we just follow everything they say out there on the street. Jesus was a black man. Jesus wasn't a black man. Jesus was a white man with blue eyes. Jesus wasn't a white man with blue eyes. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't care what color Jesus is. He can be purple with green eyes. I know he died for me. That and he closed that bridge right there Amen. so that I can go back to the Father. Amen. 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 Jesus is the only one who died for his creation. Most people who, with their gods, you have to die for their God. Our God died for us. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Colossians 2 and 13. And it says this. You, New Living Translation, y'all know that. It says you were dead because of your sins. Let me start that again. You were. I'm going to put some emphasis on this word. You were. Alright? You were. Y'all know what word mean, right? Past. You were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Your sinful nature came from man. Then God made you alive with Christ. Y'all see that? Yes. So I am alive with Christ. Yes, I am. You need to make that personal. Yes, I am alive with Christ. Yes, Amen? Amen? It says he forgave how many of us? All, All of our what? Yes. He forgave just a few of our sins. All. He forgave just seven. All. You sure? Because it's only like, you know, a few you hear about the spirit. Oh, well, you know, there's seven deadly sins. All Satan was dead. All of them. <laughs> there's only seven deadly sins. Where do you get that at? Who watched the movie? Huh? That was mess. The Bible said for the wages of sin, it didn't say for the wages of these seven. Right? All sin led to death. But Jesus took care of all our sin. We read it, right? Amen. Amen. Let's keep reading. Verse 14. He canceled the record that contained the charges against us. Oh my God. You mean I'm no longer a sinner? Huh? I'm no longer a sinner. Yeah, you know what? I have sinned, but I'm no longer a sinner. A sinner practices sin. So if you practice in sin and you don't know Jesus, you are a sinner. But even if you are doing something that you've got a bad habit, you practicing something, and you with Jesus, you're still not considered a sinner. You know what you're considered? Righteous. Amen. Oh, here we go again. Amen. Oh, Pastor, you say they can do anything they want. You, they can do anything they want. So you give them a license to sin. I told you last week, you, you didn't need a license before you heard this. What makes you think you need a license now? Uh, huh? Keep doing what you're doing because I'm going to tell you something. When you believe that you are the righteousness of God, all that stuff that you are doing against the kingdom, what's going to happen is it's just going to fall off. You're going to be like, you know what? I don't feel like doing that no more. Mm. The more you fill yourself with Jesus, the more you get up under the washing of the watering of the word, Ephesians 5 and 26, the less you're going to desire to do what's against him. Amen. 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 And I don't tell you this just because the word says. I tell you from experience. Yes. Every time they preach the law, 
Thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Guess what I wanted to do? The thou shalt not. Mm-hmm. When you go out this door, thou shalt not. Do not look at, to the left because there's a dragon outside. <laughs> Don't look to the left because there's a dragon outside when you go out the door. Now, when you go out the doors, what are you going to do? Immediately look to the left. That's why God knew. He said, you know what? This, this thing's too perfect for them. They can't handle it. I'm going to have to give them a, a savior. Amen. 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 I'm going to have to give them a savior. Because these people are just too doggone curious. Hey. Adam, check this out. We're still just as curious as they were. Thou shalt not look at that dragon. <laughs> you know what? They really do have a dragon out there. It's classic. It's classic. Don't demonize everything. Amen. <laughs> I'm still on 14. Are you there? Yeah. So he canceled the record against us, right? All the charges against us. So if he canceled all your charges, that means you're innocent, right? Okay. So he took it and destroyed it by nailing it to the. He nailed it to the cross. Amen? It is finished. Sin is no longer being charged to our account, y'all. Amen. Oh, no, no, Pastor. It don't say that. The Bible don't say that. The Bible does not say We just read it. Did we not read it? We read it. Okay, so the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Are you guys ready to write? Okay, here we go. It is finished. Sin is no longer being charged to our accounts. According to, you ready to write? Second Corinthians 5 and 19. Psalms 32 and 2. Romans 4 and 8. Isaiah 43 and 25. Isaiah 44 and 22. Jeremiah 31 and 34. Jeremiah 33 and 8. Colossians 2 and 13 through 14. Hebrews 8 and 12 through 13, Hebrews 9 and 28, uh-huh. Hebrews 10 and 12, uh-huh. and Hebrews 10, 16 through 18. Uh-huh. He yeah. says that he, if you didn't get it, go back and listen to the uh-huh. report. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But he has forgiven us for our sins. That means you are no longer a sinner. You can't be a yeah. sinner saved by grace. Uh-huh. You either a sinner or you saved by grace. Yeah. One or the other. Yeah. So we have been saved by grace because sin is no longer being charged to our account. It doesn't matter what you leave you go out and murder somebody. Sin is not charged to your account because Jesus get forgave you. Yeah, but see, yeah. if you are in the right place and you get this word in your in your life and you being renewed, you ain't going to go out there and murder nobody. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because Jesus don't preach murder; he preach love. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that God is love. Amen. Love. Amen. I'm gonna tell you something. A lot of people try to get me to come to Christ. I was a mess. I, <laughs> so. I love you. I made some mistakes. <laughs> she know before we got together, before we, well, even when we first got together, I was a mess. Amen. I was. She said, she, amen to that. Mm. <laughs> but, God, but you know what? When I started getting God's love for people, every time somebody condemned me and told me, thou shalt not, that's what I wanted to do. So I was like, okay, well, because I was curious. Why don't he want us to do that? Maybe it's something that feels good about it, you know. You know how people are. Uh, thou shalt not fornicate. Ooh, I wonder what that's like. <laughs> Ooh, that's cool. Thou shalt not have adultery. Ooh. It's, it's the same thing. Adultery, fornication, same thing, right? It all comes from the Greek word uh, por- porneus or porn. Poor no. That's it, right? It's the same thing. And so, you know, when we look at that stuff and we follow and follow it, and the more you try to follow it, the more you do it. That's what it was, that's why the scripture says that for the wages of sin is death. And sin is it it said that that yeah, but the gift of God is life. It said that sin increased. How did it increase? By the law. So the more we read the law, or no, not read, the more we taught people to live by the law, mm-hmm. the more they wanted to sin. But as soon as we stop with all this sin mess in the church, stop, stop, stop. 
Now people can get an understanding of love. Amen. If you focus on sin, you will never get an understanding of who Jesus is. That's right. Because he's already taken care of that in your life. But if you don't believe that, he ain't going to make you accept it. Why? Because he is a perfect gentleman. Amen. 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 All right. So all those scriptures, right? All those scriptures let you know that your sin is no longer being charged to your account. Amen. All right. So quit worrying about sin. Be who God has created you to be. And be it to the fullest. If something needs to be changed in you, the Holy Spirit will change it. Amen. You will lose the desire to do what the Holy Spirit don't like. Amen? Amen. Don't let nobody come to you when you need her. You shouldn't be wearing that in church. Yeah. So maybe, maybe the person that's coming up saying you shouldn't be wearing that in church should be the one that's outside the church. Amen. Come on, come on now. Come on. <laughs> well, they shouldn't be in here because, you know, they... You know, they, they homeless, you know, they, just, they don't smell too good. You know what? They can stay, you got to go. That's right. Your perfume. That's right. You got to go. <laughs> don't be mean, Elder Carter. Oh, you like House of God for everybody. Long with no clone. Amen. I know you wear that clone called Savage because you're a savage, dude. All right. <laughs> so how was the law of Moses finished? Hmm? Matthew 5 and 17, New King James Version. How was the law of Moses finished? Matthew 5 and 17. In 18, New King James Version. Are you there? When you get there, amen. let me know by saying a hearty amen. 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 I didn't hear enough hearty amen. 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 <laughs> amen. amen. All right. And it says this. Do not think, and this is Jesus speaking, do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. Now, Jesus didn't come to destroy the law because the law was perfect. The problem was, couldn't nobody live by it. Okay? So, I can't, so do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Yes. Amen? Amen? For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will not by no means pass from the law till... For you people who are English, until all is fulfilled. Amen. 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 Meaning that he came to physically accomplish all the scriptures said that, that all this, he came to accomplish everything that the scriptures said he would accomplish. Amen. So he lived the law. Amen. Amen. And because he lived and fulfilled the law, it has now passed. Amen. 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 It's passed. Because he fulfilled it. Now you're in him. Right? Amen. Are you in him? Yes. yes. Finished. Yes. Amen. Finished. Amen. The law is finished. Amen. Amen. Love will last forever. That's why the Bible says, these three are left, what it says, hope, faith, and love. But the greatest of these is, love. why? Because love will never end. Amen? But the law, guess what happened? It ended. It ended. All right. Hebrews 10 and 9 says this. Then he added, look, this is 10 and 9, New Living Translation, you can write it. Then he added, look, I have come to do your will. He canceled the first covenant. Somebody say cancel. Yeah. He canceled the first covenant in order to establish the second. Okay, so if nothing was wrong with the first covenant, then he wouldn't have had to establish the second. Now, the reason he established the second is because not that the first covenant was messed up. Again, it's because we could not 
live by it. We just were not able to live that type of perfection. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that you don't have to be perfect to be a Christian now? Amen. 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 You don't have to be perfect to receive God's blessings. You don't have to be perfect to, to uh, receive the promises of God. You don't have to be perfect. The only thing you have to be is in Jesus. Amen. 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 Romans 4 15 NIV says this <clears throat> because the law brings wrath and where there is no law there is no transgression where there is no law there is no transgression so he fulfilled the law and once he fulfilled it what happened to it? He got rid of it right? alright and so now there is no law right? No Mosaic law, how about that? Amen. That's right. Amen. And so now you need to understand that you are saved. You are free. Understand this. Anybody know about the Audubon? Amen. Cool. You know, Audubon, you can get on there with your vehicle, and if your vehicle go 180 miles, you can drive 180 miles. No problem, right? But the United States, if your vehicle says 180 miles an hour on it, and you do 180 miles an hour, you break the law. Right? And so you broke the law. Now you're going to clank, clank, go to jail. Right? You have to start a prison ministry. Because you're going to be in jail from whatever to whatever. However, if there was no law about speed in the States, then if I went 180 miles an hour down 195 and there's no law, that means I'm free, right? So even though I'm free, just like that dog, a lot of people, even though you're free, just like the dog, we're still living by a law that does not exist. And our lives are completely limited, not because God has limited your life, it's because you limit your life. Amen. Because you allowed yourself to hold on to that limitation, to the law that told you you couldn't go faster than 60 miles an hour. Y'all get this, right? Okay, all right. So now, guess what Jesus wants you to be? If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free wrong. You can get on the road out there and do 180 on the Audubon. However, if you don't drive right and you crash, there are consequences. Yes. There are consequences for things that we do that <laughs> that maybe they're full awful. You understand? We can do something there's consequences. You can step outside your marriage. There's consequences. Alright? Yeah, God still loves you, but there's consequences. You can go steal from the bank. Yes, God still loves you, but you know what? There's consequences. Yeah. But see, the thing about it is, when you love Jesus, you don't want to do none of that stuff. When you know that Jesus loves you, you don't want to do none of that stuff. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I'm just about done. I just want to see which scripture I want to I want to go to real quick. Okay. But can we go to uh, John? And this is going to be from the Amplified Classic Evangelist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> MC, are you there? We get to John ten and ten. Amen. John 13. Now a lot of people have actually taken this passage out of out of portion. Yeah. Out of you know context. And you know the deal. If you take the text away, you only leave the con. And there's a lot of cons in church. Why? Because people can't read. Amen when you get there. Yeah. 
It says this, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full, to the overflows. Who wants life like that? Me. You should want that type of life. Why? Because Jesus said, I have come to give you that type of life in abundance to the full, to the overflows. Who's the thief? Amen. Who's the thief? Religion. <laughs> Religion. And you know what? It, it irks me because all, I'm t- I don't care who it is, I've seen pastors, big names or big churches, they say, oh, the thief is the devil here. No, it ain't. Go back up and read what it's talking about and who it's talking to. Thief is religion. It's talk, he's talking to the religious leader. The thief. He's talking about those who try and get saved by going through religion. They're thieves. It's only one way to get across this bridge. It's Jesus. You can't go around because if you go around, you're going to fall off the bridge. You go around the other way, you're going to fall off the bridge. Every time you fall off the bridge, there's a place called death. But what I love about my Jesus is he says that a just man may fall seven times, but he gets back up. So he gives you an opportunity to climb yourself back up there and then wait on that bridge to fall so you can cross. Amen? Amen. He gives you, listen, this is what he wants you to have a life of. He wants your life to be the head and not to tell. To be above only, never give beneath. To be the lender and not the borrower. To be blessed going in, blessed coming out, blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Everything you put your hands to is supposed to prosper because you are blessed and sin is no longer being counted to your account. Amen? Amen? So when Jesus said it was finished, what was finished? Making sacrifices for our sins. Finished. Because if you believe in Jesus, sin has been completely eradicated. Finish. No more curse of the law. Finish. No more condemnation. Finish. No more poverty. Finish. No more sickness that leads to death. Finish. No more death for the believer. Finish. Because who the Son sets free is free indeed that the leaders come for. Amen. Finish. People don't know how to enjoy life. You know, because they, 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 now that picture there is probably worth a whole lot of money. I'm trying to take it out of church. All right. But the draw, the thing about it is, everybody has been taught that Jesus is this guy who is always serious and always this and that. And, you know, he, non, no nonsense. See, when you read the Bible, you realize that ain't who Jesus was at all. Jesus enjoyed life. Amen. 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 Jesus enjoyed life. Not only did he enjoy life, he was always the life. Life of the party. Amen. Amen. When he went to Zacchaeus' house, he was the life. He didn't, they, he didn't even ask Zacchaeus to give to give this life to him. You know what he did? Zacchaeus said, ooh, you know what? I will pay everybody back four times what I took from him. And Jesus said, this whole household was saved. <laughs> Simply because he started believing in Jesus. Amen. 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 You got to get free. You got to cut loose the leash. You got to get off the chain. The chain of limitation will destroy your life. It's time for you to be free. It's time for you to do what God has called you to do. And stop letting mankind stop you from doing it. Hmm? If I let religious leaders stop us from doing what we're supposed to be doing. Because I did at one time in my life. I did. I used to talk to you about it. Yes. I was like, yeah, I don't want them to think of you know, me this way. They think of me that way. Now, I don't give a dog's butt. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> I'll clap for myself. Great job. Because you know what? Because I know who Jesus is. I have a relationship with Jesus. I know who he is. Amen. Amen. Now, when he went there, listen, he at the at the, at the marriage ceremony, he brought listen, he didn't just make two bottles of wine. No. No. He made 180 gallons of wine. Yes. Wow. Hmm? Now how many of y'all ever went to a party and you brought 180 gallons of wine? Uh, uh, 
food. Well, he, you know, uh, it wasn't the kind that was fermented to make you drunk. You better keep reading that scriptures. See, that's the problem. You can't read. Because hmm? when you take the text out of context, all you get is the con. A lot of people out there have been conned, and they still ask some dumb questions like this. Is it all right for me to drink? You know what? Don't read your Bible and you come back and tell me. <laughs> I ain't got to ask y'all that. Y'all. Uh, but the scripture tells you you know not to get drunk. You know what I'm saying? And, and the thing about it is this church is so busy fighting against one another. Well, should you be baptized in the name of Jesus or the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's the same. Uh, just dunk them. Get them in the water. You know what I'm saying? Just get them in the water. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the churches are arguing over things that just, just does not make nobody even cares. Mm-hmm. But they're so the Bible calls them children in First Corinthians chapter one, First Corinthians chapter three. Says they're acting like children. Like children. Paul said, I'm glad I am baptized in none of you. Y'all run around talking about, ooh, Paul say no, Paul ain't say nobody. <laughs> Jesus loves you. Remember this. Amen. 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 Jesus loves you. And he came to set you free. And my question is, will you receive that freedom that he has for you? Amen. It's a gift. A gift is given to you for today. Not yesterday, but today. Not tomorrow, but today. That's why a gift is known as the present. Today. Amen. 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 I actually want to please stand. It's really quite simple, really. We, we've made it so hard in religion because we made people think that it has to do all these strange things and stuff like that. But you got a relationship with Jesus Christ, you're like, why am I doing that? Why am I doing this? It's because of the teaching. A lot of places don't have teaching anymore. The only thing they have is service. Service, service, service. Service is no good without teaching. Amen. 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 In the military, there were certain things that we learned. If we got separated from the crew, if we and if we were out in the wilderness, we we learned there were certain things that you can eat and drink that, that would help you to survive, right? But if no one ever taught us that and then put us out in the woods, what would happen? We would die. There's a lot of spiritual people in the body of Christ right now who are spiritually dead because they have a limit on their lives because they're not being taught how to survive. They're not being taught how to thrive. The word is being spoken. It's going right over their heads. People are using versions of the Bible that you do not understand. And the funny thing about it is they themselves don't understand it. That's right. That's right. And you're talking about what Reverend Green said. I care about what Reverend Green said. What did Jesus say? Amen. 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 That's what matters. What did Jesus say? I understand what Reverend Green said. Oh, them stones who helps themselves. The Bible says that. No, it don't. No, it don't. Mm-mm. Benjamin Franklin said that when you research. Amen. We love you here at Christian Freedom Ministries. <laughs> and we want to show you, we want to give you the truth. Amen. We want to give you the truth. We want to give you the love of God. Amen. When you come here, listen, if you come in here and you're expecting to be condemned and judged and talked about, this is not the place for you. If you're looking for a bunch of rules and regulations, this is not the place for you. If you're looking to be free in Jesus, this is the place for you. Amen. If you're looking to have a life in abundance to the full and to the lower flows, then we are the place for you. Amen. If you're looking at a place that's going to have, that's going to give you love, and no matter what happens, they're going to keep that unconditional love for you, then this is where you want to be. Yes. Amen. 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 So, come on now. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. In fact, we're going to do a uh, prayer of salvation right now. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I need you to understand, you are saved. And because you are saved, you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now, amen, you need to be transformed through the renewing of your mind. That's what Bible study in Sunday school is for. People don't want to go to Bible study in Sunday school 
Because they're like, well, you know, that's just a waste of time. We don't need it. Listen, I'd rather you come to Bible study in Sunday school than regular service. Amen. Because that's where you learn. That's where you can ask your questions. Amen. Jesus Amen. said, follow me. And the disciples followed him. And he was always teaching them. Right? Amen. In the same way, how are you going to learn unless you get taught? You know, I mean, you go to school 12, 13, 14, 17 years of your life, 20 years of your life, learn how to be a productive part of society, but don't want to go to church for two hours and learn how to be a productive part of the kingdom of God. Yeah. We have to really get our priorities straight. Yes, yep, yep, yep. When I say two hours, one hour for Bible study and not even really a full hour for Sundays and way. But but we teach there's so much so much education, so much revelation that's going forth. Amen. Yeah. So if you want to see Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we ask that you to pray with us right now. And let us pray. Father, Father, I open my heart. I open my heart. And I ask that Jesus will step in. And I ask that Jesus will step in. Take the remains of my life. Take the remains of my life. Make something of them. Make something of them. I surrender all to you right now. I surrender all to you right now. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. And I confess in my mouth. That Jesus died. That Jesus died. And rose on the third day. And rose on the third day. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. And I confess in my mouth. That Jesus is the Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I you know that you are saved. And now if you are saved, that means Jesus has just made you righteous. That means you are no longer a sinner. Alright? Now you are the righteousness of God. Amen. Get in a place and learn about your righteousness. Amen. I didn't say get in a place and try and become more righteous. Get into a place and learn about your righteousness. Amen. 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 And watch what Jesus does for your life from there. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at Christian Freedom Ministries. We love you. We thank God for you. And listen, hey, we are local. Come on out. If you're local, come on out. If you're um, streaming us online, we want to say thank you for being here today. We love you. And we know that Jesus loves you even more. And remember this, when the sun sets free, it's free indeed. Stay free. Amen.